All right. I now have made my baseline here. I'll label that baseline. And I have placed one inch increments going to the left and going to the right. I use a particular numbering system I find useful. You can number the baseline anywhere you want. I'm going to start with the center line being zero. And I go to the left, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I go to the right, the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. I like to number it like that for a number of reasons, but one reason I, uh, is because it confirms important ideas about center lines. You're, you know, I want you not to think so much about contour lines. Going back to our first Albertian Vale drawing where we did tick marks rather than a contour line. You could have done it with a contour line, but I ask that you wouldn't so that you start really thinking about spatial qualities. What does a line really mean? You know, we're going to go to the left, to the right. We're also going to go from this line back, so we have forward and back. So we'll also have up and down. I'm now going to place, because I know from my plan, this is parallel to the picture plane in plan. So I know it goes back. It vanishes to the point of sight. I place my push pin there. That will aid me. And I just start drawing my vanishing lines. And I should add that there really isn't uh, uh, you know, these huge differences between one point, two point, three point uh, uh, perspective and classic linear perspective. It really is all about one point perspective. I have my vanishing point. It's no longer the point of sight. I'm going to place a push pin in, take my straight edge, place my stylus first, Move it up, make sure it's against the edge. There, that's going back to the 50. Let's do the top. All right, all's well and good. But where is the end? Where's the back edge to this cube? What do I need? I need a measure point. How do I get it? The rule for measure point is always the same in this system. You measure from the vanishing point to the eye. You can use a piece of string. You can use anything you'd like. Um, I'll just, let's see here. I sometimes like to use a piece of string, but I'll just use this. I measure down. It's a, let's see here, 15 and 3 quarters. I swing up. I make a tick mark, 15, on the eye level line. I'll do that in blue. I label it. There's my tick mark. And I'll label it measure point for 50 degrees. In other words, no matter where the box is that disappears here, if I want to find the depth, I need to use that measure point. So let's find the depth. We know the box is too high, well, what we want is this, isn't it? We want to know what's the illusion of that length. Here's what we do. We go from this distance to the measure point. And that line goes back to the measure point. If it's a blue line, you know it's going back to the measure point. So let's just hold that thought for a moment. And I'm going to do the perpendicular there. Line up my, there we go, move that over. Is that in? Yeah. There's the side of the cube.
Let's do the cup. And you'll notice something about the cup. It has a little handle on it to hold. And we're going to place that in perspective as well. We're going to place it at an angle like that. So to do this, we're going to once again reference our plan. Of course, we'll use the elevation and plan and of course the grid. So you should be getting an idea that it's not strictly just vanishing points, measure points, or I'm going to just use the grid. It's a meshing of all the above and you're constantly thinking and of course the aim is space. How do I depict space? How do I make a poem about light? Because remember that's what this is. It's a poem about light. All right. Let's place then the box for the uh, uh, cup and we notice, for example, that it sits down a little bit. You know, there's just that little space so the box for our cup's going to sit down in the base here. And let's just think for a second, how could we best do this? And I look at my plan, I look at my uh, plan of the teacup on the uh, grid, I look at it, a plan and elevation here. And I think, I know what I'm going to do. I can do this. So there's your teacup. Now I can place a tracing paper over this and get the exact teacup, which is what I would do. And then I would transfer that to my tableau or to my support to make a painting.